check this out. So sometimes you do something or engage with something that's just inspirational. It just makes you feel like you have to talk about it. I've consumed a lot of, well, a, a good handful of recent anime. Um, and some have done great things. Jessica Kaisen had an amazing opening season. I thought Infinity Train On was fantastic for Demon Slayer. But there's one name I always heard about anytime I'd look up new anime. Supposedly part of the big three as far as the manga went. And many people proclaimed that, that would translate once they got into doing anime. I'm referring to the one and only Chainsaw Man. Now, when I say this is just bonkers, what I've gotten, they, what I've felt watching that anime, it's hard to put in words. Like, honestly, I have a lot of things that take up time and brain power now. I have a, a shitty ass job, um, and I have the lack of time that comes with a shitty ass job. I try to do other stuff, uh, so forth and so forth. For uh, any show to just have me stop and do nothing else while watching. That is what the last episode of CSM did to me. I did not do anything else. I was on a lunch break. I came in on that Tuesday. Actually, yeah, I was on a lunch break. Yeah, I came in, dropped all my shit. Didn't even eat. I only have an hour. I didn't even eat. And I sat down and watched that motherfucker from front to back. I heard so many things. Uh, something about this Reese character. Um... The animation is going to be great between uh, Katana Man and Chainsaw Man. All of this stuff. I had high expectations. And it, I mean, it it delivered in that I didn't know what to expect at the end. Like, I have no forewarning with this manga. I have no idea what's going to be in the future. I have no concept of the timeline here. So, I don't know shit about shit. And I felt okay not knowing about anything. Um... They went in, they beat the bad guy, uh, and we got really no in-depth information about what the future is going to look like other than the fact that they're going to be chasing the gun devil, and there's some character that is very relevant that got very marginally teased towards the back end of that episode. And that's it. These guys are going to keep on fighting a good, good fight, and... There's going to be more people that come along and try to stop them. And it's almost a situation where the destination does not matter. The journey is what mattered. With Attack on Titan, for example, Attack on Titan's ending, as far as the manga goes, is always going to be a brown spot in the proverbial underwear of anime. It's going to always be negatively uh, responded to. And honestly, if you thought it was going to be a good ending you weren't patient in the last few chapters before the ending there's just no possible way they could stick it um they did the best they could but Ishiyama had a certain timeline he's working with and he said okay we're gonna cut it off here and that's what he wanted to do and he did it and it was a bad idea but it's <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not I'm not telling any creator how he should finish his stuff off but yeah I don't know if it's a great idea uh, all that being said Attack on Titan is still a top 10 anime, 15 anime, 20 anime all the time uh, because of the journey. That whole last season was fucking incredible uh, as far as I guess a manga arc would go uh, in correlation. From where Aaron uh, squares up with the Reiner to pretty much where it becomes Game of Thrones. I have multiple episodes, multiple videos calling the end of that that anime, Game of Thrones adjacent, and I'm sorry, it kind of is, but uh, I would say probably around the time where people just start conveniently end up where they need to be at to save other motherfuckers' lives, um, I guess that would describe, like, pretty much once the train comes in, uh, the train with the McGrath to save asses around that time. No, I think it's a train with Shadows. Shadows and the you know, the soldiers. Uh, and then Chaz and McGrath meet up. Around that time is where I'm like, okay, this is being very convenient. And then by the time he got to like the really end of that arc, uh, it was, I don't know what to say. Uh, but the journey is what matters. You remember the journey. You're going to remember the bad ending too, but you remember the journey. As long as the journey is fine, that's all that matters. And with CSM, 
the journey was fan fucking task from the very beginning. There's like no first arc of a anime I think I described as being the best first arc of anime I've seen as much as I did with this anime. It made me feel the shit that I have not felt in an anime. It was very enjoyable. Like literally like fucking funny. There's not many anime that are like funny to me as like a grown person. Like when I was younger, I could fucking guffaw at Naruto or uh, Bleach or even Dragon Ball. But like I'm a grown ass man and I'm like laughing at fucking, I know it's childish humor kind of, but like it's funny childish humor uh, with CSM. That's a funny anime. Just because it, it has some enjoyable moments sometimes. Uh, Demon Slayer, if I was a little bit younger, I think that'd be a pretty funny anime. Although, the My Hero Academia, uh, Black Clover, like, you got like 27 different anime that like accomplish the same realm um, in terms of entertainment as a uh, Demon Slayer does. Actually, Demon Slayer is I, I like I like um, the the sound uh, ha Hashira. He was pretty funny. Uh, I always enjoyed when Goku when he was on screen. It's not a boring anime by any means, but as far as funny goes, JJ or CSM is actually funny, like funny. The um, the kind of novelty of this guy's prerogative and what he, why he's doing this is enjoyable. The same way that Ichigo Kurosaki is enjoyable, or even um, I don't I don't want to. I feel like Luffy is closer to the Naruto uh, Goku spectrum, where he has an end destination that uh, really emboldens him uh, in a way that becomes overbearing when watching the anime. Like, maybe not overbearing per se, but like, his Nindo way, his motive, his dogma, his fucking sane spirit, um, the, the treasure pursuit, like, to be the, the best that there ever was. Like, this, that stuff takes prerogative and, and takes space in the narrative of the series Bleach doesn't have that. Ichigo Kurosaki would not fight if he didn't have people to protect. Um, and that's, really, that's always Ichigo's only motive. I mean, usually it's to protect people. Um, very rare that you have a moment where Ichigo's like, I just need to fucking become strong. I just become strong. I don't want to become fucking Super Saiyan 3 or some shit like that. You know, there's nothing like that. And then with this guy, um, outside of boobs, he got, he's got nothing like that. He does not care. Denji does not care about this getting stronger, chasing down a murderer. He accomplished everything he wanted to accomplish uh, by having a fucking job and being able to eat and sleep somewhere. And then uh, Makima being the uh, observant that she is, gives him more motives. Uh, Himeno uh, gives him motives. Basically, external goals are applied to Denji to continue <laughs> the narrative, really. Uh, but to also continue keeping him engaged. Um, and that's, I think, a very interesting way of telling the story. I mean, I don't I don't know. I think it's better than most of these battles shown in where it's just like, I need to get stronger. Uh, and if you notice, I mean, there's not really, quote-unquote, getting stronger in the traditional battle shown in anime type in this series. Uh, no one, like, trans... I mean, pretty much no one transforms a different form or anything like that. Uh, some people get different contracts with stronger devils. Um, Power and Denji just become better fighters by training, but no one becomes like Super Saiyan 4. Like, this, that doesn't happen. You know, no one gets Gear 5, which I don't know what the fuck Gear 5 is. I just hear about it on Twitter. Um, <laughs> it just becomes natural growth, which is also, I mean, that's even better than Bleach, because Bleach. They train, someone gets their ass kicked, then they get a new transformation. And it's like, uh, cool. I still let's say that I think as far as uh, a package goes, this is one of the best packages of an anime we've got in a while. Uh, I, I hear a lot of manga readers kind of want the tone to be different or want some things to be done a little bit differently in the anime. Uh, I can't speak to what the manga looks like. I may read it one day. Usually pretty good about like not reading manga unless I read the anime first. Um, although usually when I read the manga first, I'll watch anime as well. So I don't know. I just think that anime usually to me, what's shown in anime is the quintessential way of consuming the shonen. Nine times out of ten, especially in the classics, I think the anime becomes more pervasive than the manga. Uh, that's just from what I've consumed. Um, but this is it for me. I don't want to make this a twenty minute video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, 
if you have any other anime to recommend that are recent great in the manga that become elite anime i hear tokyo revengers is like that i've heard that one recommended a couple times i may watch that at some point but uh right now i'm out of anime bleach is done for at least i think a year uh i would assume that uh csm's coming to be like a jjk or a demon slayer where we're probably not getting another season for like two years we might get like some kind of uh intermediary content like a movie or something like that uh, some people say that the re's involvement can be or reze i don't know could be a uh movie in of itself I've, I've heard that on the various internets but uh anyway it's gonna be a while so i'll try to find something else and maybe do some more videos